Hi, we're finally in chapter two. So um, I had said in the in the calendar that chapter two can be tough for people, if especially if you haven't had 275 and done some counting, then 2122, well, 21 is just introduction, but 22 is nice. 2324 will be tougher. It's permutations and combinations. And if you've never seen it, then that's it's a little tough for that reason, not because it's really a hard topic. It's just it it takes a while to get used to um, how to count and with replacement, without replacement, and all that's going to make a difference. So um, don't don't be sad about that. That is that is a harder section for people. But I'll also um, I'll also um, post some problems too so review problems because that that helps a lot like seeing um, more problems so anyway this is chapter two and it has to do with counting and uh, that's why I have the count here so okay so yeah chapter two combinatorial methods I call it the discourse dream or it could be nightmare depending on how you like that course but um, so yeah this is just it just uh, combinatorial analysis is just methods of counting so that's all two one really says and two two we have a few principles um, I think again they're pretty obvious but we still we state them um, the basic principle of counting says of event E can happen N possible ways and event F can happen M possible ways. Then there are N times M ways we can pick an element from E and then an element from F. So in case that didn't make sense, uh, let's do it in terms of something that would make better sense. Um, let's say for the fall homecoming, uh, there are a thousand guys that are eligible for a homecoming king and 300 women for a homecoming queen. How many different king-queen pairs could we have? If you want to think of it this way, we could actually make a tree, right? So here's, we'll say man one, man two, man three, all the way down to man a thousand. And then off of this, uh, if man one is chosen, there's woman one, woman two, all the way down to woman three, 300. So imagine a, a, for each of these male branches, there's 300 female branches. So there's a thousand choices for the male times 300 choices for the female. So there's 30,000 different, um, is that right? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, I'm missing a zero. Sorry about that. Um, 300,000 possibilities um, for the homecoming king queen pair. Okay, um, the next just extends that basic um, principle of counting in case you have more than just two events happening um, N1 events of E1, N2 events in E2, and K event, events in EK, you're just multiplying all those ends together. Um, so here's another one. A uh, planning committee um, consists of three freshmen, four sophomores, five juniors, two seniors. Um, out of that committee, we're going to make a subcommittee of four where we get to choose um, one freshman. So if you think about it, we have three choices for freshmen, freshman one, freshman two, freshman three. Um, sophomores, we have um, across that four choices, so sophomore one, sophomore two, sophomore three, sophomore four. Imagine there's four branches off of each of those. Five juniors, two seniors. So if you built this whole tree, three choices for freshmen, four choices for sophomores, five choices for the junior, and two for the senior. So um, 12, 10, 120 different subcommittees are possible. Um, with a unique freshman, sophomore, junior, senior for each. Um, this problem I like. Later we can do it as a combination, but right now, I don't even, maybe, yeah, do I think it fits in this section? Yeah, actually, I guess I do. Um, sorry, we have a new dog, so you might hear some of that too. Um, Lady Gaga is gonna have a Memorial Day party and she's inviting over 25 friends. Um, if each guest shakes hands with everyone else at the party exactly once, what's the number of handshakes? Let me see, if each guest, so I'm just, I guess I'm just including the 25 people. So 
uh, there's lots of ways to do this, but um, if we were in class, we'd talk about it. I'm, I'm going to line up my, uh, here's my 25 friends coming to the party. Um, they're all waiting to get in. So imagine once person one comes to the party, there they are. Um, okay, they're done. The first person came through the door. The next person that comes through the door, um, they actually will shake one person's hand, right? Just this guy. So they'll sit over here now and he's out. Um, the next person that comes through will shake two people's hands. Um, and so he'll be over there, then he's out. Um, the next person will shake the next three people's hands. So we have one plus two plus three plus all the way up to, let me see the first person. We just So this would be one. So we should have up to 24, I think. Um, the sum i, i equals 1 to 24, isn't this just 24 times 25 over 2? There's a nice formula for this, right? Oh, this is going to look pretty cheap. I'm just trying to remind myself if I believe that formula. So sum i, i equals 1 to 24. Um, 300, is that what I would have gotten? 24 times 25 divided by 2. Yeah, okay, so my formula was right. Um, so actually, there's 300 different handshakes that will take place. Um, I think I'll end it on the birthday problem and then uh, make another video. The birthday problem, very, very famous problem. Um, the question is, if there's n people in a room, what's the probability at least two of them share the same birthday? It could be three, four, five, but at least two people share the same birthday. Um, during the school year, what I usually do in class is wager that... Um, in my class, at least um, two people have the same birthday. And I'm going to bet, and I don't know how to do this efficiently, at least two of us in this class right now have the same birthday. And I don't know if I want to try it or not, because maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe on your next homework set, I'll ask everybody to submit their birthday. And um, you can bet if you'd like or not. Maybe, maybe I'll make that homework set for is, um, do you think at least two people have the same birthday? So um, you'll be surprised. I mean, when I have a class right now, um, there's 25 students and there's me. So there's 26 total. So if I make this wager, what's the probability I'm going to win? Meaning there's at least, I'm going to wager at least two people do have the same birthday. A lot of people in class will vote against me. Um, but the probability there's at least two or more out of 26 is actually pretty high. Um, in your mind right now, I'd, I'd try to think, like, think about what you think that number is. What's the probability? At least think of our online class right now. There's 25 students. There's me. What's the probability at least two of us share the same birthday? And I can run this simulation in, in Maple just to kind of show you what I'm doing. Um, I can make a die. Um, that it's 365 sides representing 365 dies, uh, days of the year. Um, this commanding die is just going to roll the die. And now what I'm going to do is roll the die. Um, right here you can kind of see I'm rolling it. Um, sorry about that. I can just highlight. I'm rolling it 26 times and I'm going to see if there's any identical numbers here. That would mean out of 26 people, two or more match. So. Um, I rolled it, I actually asked the sort so I could look quick, but I'm looking through the numbers and it doesn't look like anyone in that set matched. Okay, so one try out of, one try so far and nobody matched. So here's another one right there. You see there's, there's a match right there. So, um, so now it looks like a half probability. We've done it twice. Again, it's a small sample size, but I'm just kind of looking fast if there's any others. Um, but yeah, there's one, 11, 11. So out of two times, at least one of those. Oh, there we go, 67. So there's um, at least two people shared the same birthday. Let's do it again. Um, just looking quick, unless I missed one. Oh, here. Okay, so there, there's three times out of four right now. At least two people would have shared the same birthday. And I have to admit, I almost always win this in class, and I almost take everybody's money, and it's a really fun experiment. Um, so um, let me just show you the solution to this. 
Um, so how do you determine this number? It's a really nice problem in probability. Uh, what's the probability at least two people have the same birthday? That's a complement of no two people out of n having the same birthday. And that's a really easy problem to solve. So um, I'm going to say a is at least two people have the same birthday, and a complement is no two people have the same birthday. So this is the first person, they have 365 choices. The second person, not to match the first person, has 364 choices. The third person, not to match the first two people, have 363 choices, all the way down to 365 minus n plus 1 over 365. I always have to think a little, it's minus n plus 1 or minus n, or that's a little confusing. But um, So in this formula right now, I'm going to go down 365, 364 is 363, n is 26. And so I'm going to stop at whatever this is, 365 minus 26 plus 1. And actually, uh, you know, you can just multiply that or do a simple code. But I just wanted to see the probabilities if you had two people, three people, four people. So at 20 people, uh, it's already 41% uh, that at least two people will match. And you can see at my magic number 26, which is usually, I usually have 26 or more people in my probability class. There's about a 60% chance that two or more will match. Now again, that's a probability. So if you want to take me up on this bet, um, I guess I'll do an IOU for next quarter and give you some some money or something. I don't I don't know. We can figure out what we're gonna wager or maybe bonus points or I don't know, maybe you have to make a video or I, I don't know, but um I bet at least two of us in this class have the same birthday. So I think I'll I'll write that into the next homework set and you can take a wager. Um I'll go ahead and stop this and start the next one in a minute.